hello, all of you beautiful people. Thais Sky here. Welcome to Reclaim the Podcast. I am so happy that you are tuning in for this episode because this episode is a solo sode. Is not that, that's what the cool kids are calling it, right? Solo sode? Anyone? Anyone? Well, it's a solo episode, which means it's just me with you today on this beautifully intimate journey of reclaiming your sovereignty. Um, I'm being silly. So I am doing these solo sods now um, as an opportunity for me to answer your questions. So I've been asking you all to email me at info at thaissky.com for whatever's on your heart, whatever is pressing into your heart that you like some support around, and I will go in and answer them. So let's do this. Hey everyone, I'm Thais Sky. Welcome to Reclaim, a podcast for women by women on conversations that matter. So I received the following question. Hi Thais, I have a question for you. For years I have done inner work that when I look back, I regard as bypassing. I can see now that I wasn't really getting into the weeds of the situation and was just doing surface shallow work. That scares me because I feel like I've wasted so much time. Now I'm not sure how to proceed because I want to go deeper into my inner world and finally get to the core of some of my bigger hurts, but I can't tell if I am bypassing or not. All I know is that I'm not sure where to start. Any thoughts? Thanks. Bypassing queen. All right, bypassing queen, I do have many, many thoughts for you. In fact, I received a really similar question in my group program, Worthy Women Arise, last week. And I say that because I just want you to know that you're not alone in asking this question. You know, this concept of spiritual bypassing or bypassing has come up a lot in the past few years. At least I've seen it being coming up a lot more recently. And that word resonates with me too. When I look back at some of the things that I've done and some of the ways that I've acted, I can totally see how I was bypassing or spiritually bypassing the issue. So let's unpack a little bit about what spiritual bypassing means and how we can know that we're doing it so that we can get to the type of results that we want. So spiritual bypassing is basically seen as the use of spiritual practices and Um, beliefs in order to avoid dealing with unresolved wounds, painful um, feelings, and um, basically core wounding. And I would say that there's even like such a thing as like psychological bypass where we use fancy psychological words like this is a defense in efforts to not really deal with our pain. It's kind of like astrological bypassing, you know, when we're like, oh, it's because I'm a Scorpio. And that somehow is supposed to excuse the fact that they've done something that's really hurtful. It's a way that you avoid responsibility by just saying, oh, this is, this is just because of my moon sign, or this is just because Mercury is retrograde, or it's just, you know what I mean? Like it's when we try to blame something else for our problems because we can't really handle taking responsibility for those pain yet. Now, as someone who's been, you know, doing this work with people for a long time, I just have to tell you right off the bat that it's not always the right thing to go right into the most painful feelings. In fact, so much of our personality is the way that we've learned how to cope and deal with painful stuff. And so the answer to not bypassing isn't necessarily to judge yourself for bypassing, for feeling really shitty because you bypass, and then like forcing yourself to face stuff that you may not be ready to face yet. I deeply believe that like we have to have a certain amount of ego strength, a certain amount of um, inner strength in order to look at our more painful traumas and experiences that really debilitated us. And sometimes we're just not quite ready yet. You know, when I look back in my life, um, for I would say the first seven years of the healing work that I was doing, I can 
I could judge it as spiritual bypassing because I was using so much of the light tools um, as a way to not feel the pain. But really what I was doing is I was using these quote unquote light tools, um, like tools that keep us in the light as a way to save me from drowning. I said this again and again, that the light saved me from drowning and the darkness taught me how to swim. When we're in our deep emotional pain, when we're um, in the midst of our traumatic responses, that's the time that we need to go to the light. So for example, when you're deeply triggered by something and you're completely collapsed, I'm not talking about triggered as in like you're bothered by something. I'm talking about a, a nervous system response where you're completely collapsed and you can't seem to look at the world straight sort of thing. That's not really the time to be investigating your mother wound, right? Like that's not really the time to go be looking at why you feel unworthy. When you're in that deep panic, the best thing to do is use tools like breath work, like grounding meditations, like, you know, phoning a friend, calling somebody, getting support. I mean, these are things that we need at the moment to fortify ourselves, to get us out of that um, fight, flight, freeze response. And then when we are back into um, a more level space, then we can look at the mother wound, the worthiness stuff, all of that, right? So we have to really be conscientious that it's not always appropriate for people to do the deeper shadow work at any given moment. We need both. Sometimes we need to seek the light. We need to, that rope to save us from drowning. And then when we feel strong, we catch in our breath, we can go back in if that feels like something we want to do. Um, so that's why I want to be careful about using any kind of idea of bypassing as a form of judgment that's telling you that you're not doing enough. I think the worthiness wound can use so many of things that are inherently helpful and turn it against ourselves. And I'm seeing this happening with um, many of us who are on this journey, including bypassing queen, where it's like, when you're looking back, you're like, oh, I don't think I went deep enough. But at that time, you probably needed the tools that you needed. You needed to be doing the shallower stuff because that was paving the way for you to then do the deeper stuff. It, it all works together. We need both the light work and the shadow work. That's how we build ego strength. That's how we build a sense of um, um, fortification within ourselves so that we can go deeper and deeper into ourselves. In my own healing journey, you know, there's still parts of myself that I'm addressing, um, that I've been addressing since I started over a decade ago. And it's not that I'm addressing this exact same thing. It's that I'm addressing it with more nuance in a deeper perspective. I see growth as an upward spiral. You're never really revisiting the issue as if um, you didn't, it, no healing had taken place, but you're in a, a higher place where you can now look at the same issue with a deeper sense of understanding. I don't believe there's any, there's such a thing as like regression. I think every time that we are experiencing a problem that we thought we'd fixed, we're experiencing it with a different perspective, with different insights, with different knowledge. And now we get to learn a deeper lesson out of this problem. So I don't know if it's necessarily helpful to look back and to judge whether or not we were doing the deep, like a level of deep work that you wanted to be doing. You were doing the work that was accessible to you. And now because of that work, you can do even deeper work. I will say what I find to be more helpful in terms of naming bypassing is when we're seeking results um, that requires work and we're not willing to do the work. So that's when I think it's helpful to name, oh, I'm bypassing right now. For example, when we want to forgive somebody, when we want to accept a situation, and sometimes we kind of just demand that on ourselves. Like, I wish I could just accept this, or I wish I could just forgive her and move on, um, or I wish I could just forgive myself that's a sign when I hear that, that there's unmet needs there, that there's some wounds that need to be tended to there. Because when you do that work, the acceptance and the forgiveness comes easier. Yes, of course, there are some ways that we can learn how to forgive and that we can learn how to accept. But for the most part, I find that we know how to forgive. We know how to accept, just like we know how to love. I don't think we can force ourselves to love something. I think love is a natural condition of um, expressed emotion. And so 
in the same way, I think forgiveness and acceptance are all natural expressions of our highest self. And in order for that higher self to express itself, we first have to go through the lower self. We first have to go through the wound. We have to go through the, pro the, the hurt that is keeping us from accepting, from forgiving. I also really like this definition that I saw on lonerwolf.com. Um, I don't know lonerwolf. I can't attest to their work, but I like what I found here. They say that at its core, spiritual bypassing is like any form of avoidance that rewards us with a false sense of security and happiness. And um, the reason why I believe that avoidance offers us a false sense is that um, when we're in avoidance, um, it's it's a temporary reprieve, but it can't actually give us real happiness. But again, I, look, I know we're, we're quick to wanting to judge these things because first off, we have this good girl mentality and we're terrified of being called out of not being a good girl. And of course, we believe that like if we do this deeper work, then we will never feel pain again, right? Um, so like avoidance is sometimes the only way we know how to deal with something. And so instead of judging ourselves when we are in avoidance, seeing if we can name it, seeing if we can attune to it, and then we can get curious what's happening underneath it, as opposed to judging ourselves for doing something in an attempt to feel better about ourselves. Here's an example. I shared this example a few times, actually, um, where... I had just moved into my new apartment and I spent an enormous amount of time trying to figure out the perfect closet organization. I mean, I spent so much time um, shopping around, looking at Amazon, looking at all my choices, like stalking like organization people, like people who like do organizations as, you know, as part of their jobs, like just trying to figure out how to sort everything that I needed to sort in my closet in the most effective way. And like, I don't usually typically like... I'm, you know, like this isn't my typical MO to do something like this. And so I, it was just kind of wild how much time I was spending on this. And at one point, my partner says to me, wow, you're spending a lot of time on this. I wonder what you're running away from. And that was really helpful that he said that because it made me pause. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. The fact that I'm spending so much time on this, something that's typically not something I spend a lot of time on. Yeah, there is probably something I'm running away from. I'm, I'm trying to avoid like, I'm alleviating the tension of my life in this way. Like, this is how I'm navigating all of the changes that were happening in my life at that point. And so I gave myself, like, a big old permission slip that, like, right there in that place, in that moment, that's where I needed to be. I needed to be in avoidance. I needed to be in distraction mode to alleviate the tension. And, like, once the tension felt a little bit more alleviated, then I could really address it. So I put a pin on it in a sort of way. I knew that eventually I would have to look at what was going on underneath, but, like, I didn't put this insane pressure on myself to um, have to confront things because I don't want to be spiritually bypassing. Like, it was harmless. It wasn't harming anybody. I wasn't, you know, spending money I didn't have or behaving in activities that felt impulsive. So I let myself just do it. Um, so I, I want to be conscientious by passing queen that I'm not adding to your judgments of yourself. It sounds like you needed to go through what you needed to go through. And sometimes avoidance and not looking at things is a normal part of being human, of dealing with difficulties. And also when we feel fortified, it is important for us to look at where we might be attempting to not do the work and get the result that we want. Because the, we can harm people by, by, by bypassing. Harm has come to people through bypassing. Um, there are a lot of spiritual teachers who teach the light but doesn't teach how to ground ourselves in the process of seeking the light. I mean, this is a valid thing. I just want to be careful when we're looking at our own behavior that we're not really just continuing to um, perpetuate our worthiness wound in the sense that um, we have, uh, somehow have to be able to do the deep shadow work or the, the deep inner work because anything that's not fully like embracing as much of the darkness as possible is bypassing. I want to just be careful um, that we're not going from one extreme to another. Something else that bypassing queen said in... Um, in the question is this concept of time there's an underlying message that i'm hearing from bypassing queen that's like i don't want to waste any more time right like i want to get to the heart of the matter and here's the thing about time 
In many ways, time is an illusion. Miracles happen every day. Things that we've been um, told are going to take years take minutes. You know, things that we think are going to happen in minutes takes a long time. Time is not linear. It's only our minds that comprehend time as linear. So it's very um, reductive to think that um, there's such a thing as wasted time. It doesn't quite work that way. And I want to be sure that when we're talking about um, our own inner growth, that we're not falling into this idea that if we do this inner work, then we will be happy. Like there's a destination, like we're, re- we're going somewhere. Like you don't want to bypass because you want to do the real work because you want to get to where you're going so that then you can be happy. And that's, you know, not necessarily how this stuff works. It's not that you'll ever arrive at a place. Our spiritual growth, our inner healing is meant to take us deeper in ourselves. It's meant to help us to hold space for more things, not necessarily to arrive at some, you know, state of happiness because that's not how the world works. You know, pain and suffering, I believe, is in so many ways inevitable. And what we're doing when we're doing this work is um, giving ourselves tools so that when hard things happen, we're not so overwhelmed. We don't go towards avoidance to the extent that we've done in the past. And so, you know, noticing where you kind of secretly hope that like you'll get somewhere and then you'll never feel pain again is a really important inquiry because wherever that exists, there's a pressure on yourself to have to be a certain way and do things as fast as possible. And that voice, that pressure can be really harmful to self. And it doesn't necessarily um, help us become better. It doesn't help us to get to where we want to be. And so look at that pressure because I'm, I'm, um, I can guess that underneath that desire um, to, you know, be happy is a desire to not feel our pain right? Because we feel our pain is so overwhelming. And so investigating into that may be really helpful. So when having said that, you know, when we're doing this work, for example, like when we're going to a yoga class, um, it's really helpful to look at why you're going to the yoga class. You know, so often we use yoga um, as a way to, as a mood alterer. Like we want to change our mood. We're like, oh, I'm not feeling good. So I'm going to go to yoga and then I'll feel better. But in on some level, that's fine because our life is hard and what's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to feel better. Um, but on another level, if you're not taking the time that you are in yoga to explore your feelings and your mood and why you're feeling the way you're feeling and um, getting to like a a deeper place of inquiry around why those feelings are coming up now, remembering that emotions are data, not direction, as I've shared amply before. Um, If you're not using your yoga to deepen into what is here, then you that is bypassing, then that is using yoga to just feel better. And we see this so often in the spiritual community where these great yoga teachers that we see on Instagram um, doing all these amazing things, leading these retreats, like, you know, doing all of the things that we want to be doing when we meet them. They're actually shitty ass people. Like, what the fuck's that? Well, it's because they're using their un unintentionally I'm sure but they're unconscious they're using these tools in an unconscious way that's only perpetuating their pain right so something as simple as yoga can be used to bypass and it can be used to deepen into our selves Um, and so it's not about the tool but how you use the tool that really matters having said that in some ways, the tools also do matter. You know, noticing cultural appropriation, noticing where the tools are coming from is important in grounding ourselves and making sure that we know, you know, how our privileges may be perpetuating oppression and marginalization because not want, not willing to see that um, is a form of bypassing. So right now the big thing is trauma-informed yoga. But if trauma-informed yoga um, is still not addressing colonization and racism, then who is this trauma-informed yoga really for, right? And so we have to be conscientious of that too. 
Now, one thing that I've been talking a lot about is this idea of shadow work um, as opposed to light work. And so I want to just dive a little bit into what is this shadow work that I speak of. Well, shadow is part of the Jungian philosophy. Like Carl Jung developed this idea of a shadow and it's basically it comprises of our disowned and disavowed aspects of ourselves. You know, as Carl Jung says, everyone carries a shadow and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. And so we basically pushed off to our unconscious parts of ourselves that we feel is too painful to own. And so it's very similar to bypassing where we're trying to dis like disavow parts of ourselves because it's so hard for us to acknowledge. And so bypassing um, is you know, the more that we're doing the shadow work, the less extent we will be bypassing because there'll be less need to bypass. Does that make sense? The more we start to own the parts of ourselves that are uncomfortable to own, the more we start to look at the parts of ourselves that are uncomfortable to look at, well, then the less we need to avoid, less we need to um, uh, use meditation and yoga to change our moods instead of to honor and accept ourselves where we are. And so you may be asking yourself, okay, so you're piquing my interest here around this whole idea of shadow work. So how do I, how do I do it? Well, one of the best ways to start is by exploring our emotions. You know, something that I teach in Worthy Women Rise is all about expanding our capacity to be with our emotions and learning how emotions are data, not directions. And one of the things that I say is that there's no such thing as a bad emotion. And in fact, in the group, I gently encourage the participants to not use labels such as bad emotions or negative and positive emotions. And instead, going towards what's comfortable and what's uncomfortable. There are feelings that are deemed positive but are actually very uncomfortable to us to sit with. Sometimes that could be something like joy or happiness. Um, and then there's a more comfortable emotions, emotions that we've um, know how to feel quite intimately. And a lot of those comfortable emotions are actually what is perceived as negative. Like for some people, depression is a comfortable emotion. They're comfortable there or guilt and shame, etc., etc. So when we start to name emotions as comfortable or uncomfortable, we can start to get curious around the ones that are comfortable and uncomfortable and ask ourselves how they've become that way and what um, relationship we have with them and what emotions are hard for us to sit with and what our emotions are bringing up within us. Um, and being able to expand our capacity to be with our emotions and um, explore our emotions as seeing them as valuable can really help us towards integration, owning the shadow and not necessarily needing to bypass or bypassing in order to avoid your pain. The big thing I want to leave you with, Bypassing Queen, is that meeting ourselves where we're at is a really profound gift that we can give ourselves. Knowing that we've developed these coping mechanisms, these strategies of leaving ourselves because who we felt, like what was coming up inside of us was really uncomfortable, is valid. And now we get to come back home and the ways that we come back home is to meet ourselves when we've left and so be tender and kind to the times that you've bypassed or continuing to bypass be kind to yourself around the fact that you're not who you think you should be in order to get what you want be kind to yourself around believing that at some point in the future you will be happy and no, there, you know nothing bad will ever happen. Be kind to yourself in here in this because in that kindness you'll be able to come back sooner. Meeting ourselves where we're at means knowing how we leave. And so the fact that you can name that you've bypassed in the past is so beautiful because that's how you've left amazing now learn that pattern learn what happened learned why you bypassed learn what was the pain that you were trying to avoid learn you know what happened how did it resolve what needed to happen in order for you to not bypass anymore get curious about your past because there is no such thing as wasted time again time is an illusion so since that happened, learn from it, investigate it, get curious with it, bring it close to yourself so you can meet yourself where you're at, so you can come home to yourself and feel more spacious and integrated in who you are. This is possible for all of us. And also, our coping skills, our coping strategies are always going to be with us. There is no such thing as a perfect human. 
And so, again, it's not about not having those offenses, but when those offenses come up, knowing why they're coming up and being tender with ourselves and asking ourselves how we can support ourselves. So maybe the more destructive coping strategies, the ones that are keeping you from what you want, can be um, diffused. As you continue to practice this kindness, I promise you, your capacity to go deeper into healing more of those wounds will happen and also nothing is really that linear you can you know do the deep work of tending to your wounds right now and then there's some wounds that you may need to wait a little bit to do you know it's anything is possible and everything is possible and we just have to sit with ourselves as much as possible so i hope that that supports you bypassing queen and to all of you who have been um, feeling similar ways and um, wanting to really ground yourself and get the most out of life i hear your passion i'm right there with you um, and it excites me that we're continuing to expand our interest in shadow work and integration and wholeness this is all really brilliant beautiful stuff and if you have a question for me that you would like me to answer, you can email me at info at com. You can also go to the show notes and get all the information for how to email me. I will talk to you all next week. Mm-hmm.